strawberry, strawberry, and strawberry once again. What's up, 23% Nation? This is your man, Coach D. Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm back with strawberries. So maybe you love them. Maybe you hate them. Maybe you've never had one. Maybe you enjoy the color. Maybe you use them as decoration for desserts. Well, whatever the case may be, please listen and watch on why, because we're about to dive just a little deeper into the wonderful world of the strawberry. All right, first up, a little bit of background information. Now, before I give you this little bit of information, what I want to do is let you know that today's video is going to last a little longer than my average videos. Why, you may wonder? Well, because strawberries are extremely popular and most people actually love them. So I thought I'd give you a little more information than what you're normally accustomed to. So let's get back on track. First up, background information. Strawberries are a type of hybrid fruit, species of the genus Fragaria. Interesting. Here's a little known fact about strawberries. They are not actually berries at all. Technically, the strawberry is an aggregate fruit, meaning it forms from a flower that has many ovaries. Each apparent seed that can be seen on the outside of the fruit is actually one of the ovaries of the flower and has a strawberry seed inside of it. Wow, who knew? Now take a look at the picture. As you can see, a whole strawberry and a strawberry cut in half. Interesting, huh? All right, now it's time for a few fun facts. There are actually many types of strawberry plants that are harvested for their fruit. It's estimated that at least 20 strawberry species of the Guinness Fragaria are grown for their berries. All types are flowering plants in the rose family. Strawberries get their name from the stacks of straw that were piled around the plants to protect them from rodents and pests. Interesting. Now, I never knew that's how strawberries actually got their name, but Hey, we are here to learn. So <laughs> there you have it, guys. A few fun facts about the one and only strawberry. All right. Now, believe it or not, the fun facts continue. Today, strawberries are grown most in California, where they've been harvested ever since the early 1900s. Over 25,000 acres of strawberries are planted each year in California the state that produces over 80% of the strawberries grown in the United States, or about 1 billion pounds of strawberries a year. Did you hear that, guys? 1 billion pounds of strawberries. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a lot of strawberries. All right, now it's time for the not-so-fun facts. According to the Environmental Working Group, which tests different fruits and vegetables for pesticides and toxin contamination, strawberries are one of the most chemically sprayed foods there is. Oh no. If you wanna get the most strawberry nutrition benefits and avoid chemical exposure, it's important to buy organic strawberries. So for those of us who prefer organic produce, well, <laughs> here's one of the reasons why you may <laughs> want to perhaps uh, be even more organic with your choices. Also, when tested, strawberries contain a number of different pesticide residues and show high concentrations of pesticides relative to other produce items. Therefore, they are on the EWGs, and that stands for Environmental Working Group's Dirty Dozen list which is the list of produce you should always try to buy organically grown. Now, for those of us who are a little frightened by this information, don't be, it's easy. All you have to do is go to your local farmer's market because farmer's markets always, uh, they cater to the organic produce uh, market. Now, if you aren't sure where a farmer's market is in your area, all you have to do is a quick Google search. Just type in farmer's markets near me, and within less than half of a second, Google will give you your desired results. Now, of course, once you get to the farmer's market, you do want to 
we confirm that the produce there is organically grown from local farmers. So there we have it, guys. Some not so fun facts about the one and only strawberry. Oh, and as you can see, the not so fun facts continue. Here we go. Unfortunately, strawberries are perishable and tend to go bad rather quickly. So try using them within a few days of purchasing them. Keep strawberries in a refrigerator unwashed to prolong their freshness. Washing them ahead of time can lead to mold growth. So <laughs> now I understand what happens to my strawberries, okay? For some people, the fiber in strawberries may cause bloating or indigestion. Another potential issue is allergies. Although strawberries are extremely healthy for the average person, they may pose a risk for anyone who has allergies to different types of histamine containing fruits or berries in general. Interesting. So there we have it guys, a few more not so fun facts about the one and only strawberry. All right, it's time to talk about the 520 rule. Ladies and gentlemen, the 520 rule is all about learning how to read and understand food labels. That's right, guys. Basically, it's a guide. It's a guide that lets us know whether or not a food or beverage item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. Now, specifically, when we talk about the 520 rule, we're really talking about percent daily value, abbreviated percent DV. Now, let's take a look at our sample food label. As you can see, it is divided into several colored parts. We have the lavender portion, we have the yellow portion, and then we have the light blue portion. Let's talk about the lavender portion first. As you can see, it is a column <clears throat> entitled percent daily value. Now, the percentages can basically be as low as zero to as high as 100%. And in some rare cases, the percent DV can go above 100%, believe it or not. Now, when we talk about the yellow portion of the food label, it basically highlights a few nutrients which unfortunately can do a lot of harm to the human body. Now, when I say harm, Basically, I'm referring to the fact that these nutrients can promote disease, illness, and sickness within the body temple. So, say hello to saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium. Now, because they do such a good job at promoting disease, you definitely want to choose foods and beverages whose percent daily values are as close to 0% as possible. Now, when we talk about the light blue portion, we're talking about dietary fiber. We're talking about vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron, which basically represent all vitamins and minerals. Now, unlike the yellow nutrients, the blue nutrients do a really good job at promoting wellness and health within the body temple. So when it comes to percent DV, you want these percentages to be as close to 100% as possible. Now, let's dive a little deeper into the 520 rule. Guys, if a food or beverage item offers anywhere from 0% to 9% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is not a good source of that particular nutrient. Next, if the food or beverage item offers 10% to 19% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is considered a good source of that particular nutrient. Lastly, if the food or beverage item offers 20% DV or greater, then that food or beverage item is considered an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there we have it, guys, the ins and outs about the 520 rule. All right, now it's time to dive into the nutrition facts. So what does this mean? It simply means that when you eat a strawberry or strawberries, right, <laughs> these are the nutrients that we're putting inside of our bodies. So for today's lecture, we're going to simply say that a single serving of strawberries is equivalent to one whole cup of fresh whole strawberries. Now, one cup is going to give us 46.1 calories, not a lot, 11 one point grams of carbohydrates. Now, it also gives us one gram of protein. Now, most people don't believe that fruits contain protein. Well, it's time to bust that myth. 
Also, 0.4 grams of fat, and check this out, 2.9 grams of fiber, which of course is very, very important. Now, vitamin C, look at this, coming in at a whopping 141% DV. So what does this mean? It not only means that one cup of strawberries is an excellent source of vitamin C, it also means that a single cup of strawberries is gonna give you almost an entire day and half of another day's quantity of vitamin C. Amazing. Now we have manganese coming in at 28% DV, excellent source. Then we have folate coming in at 9% DV, not a good source. Then we have potassium coming in at 6% DV, not a good source. Magnesium, 5% DV, not a good source. Vitamin K coming in at 4% DV, not a good source. And then we have niacin, vitamin B6, iron, phosphorus, and copper all coming in at 3% DV, not a good source. Now, some of us may be a little concerned about strawberries not being a good source of several vitamins and minerals. Well, remember something. This is based on a single serving, which is one cup. So if you want these not so good sources to turn into good or maybe even excellent sources, just simply eat two servings or maybe even three servings. So there we have it, guys, the nutrition facts about strawberries. All right, now it's time to talk about the health benefits. But before we do, I wanna talk with you about the principle of cause and effect. Now, some of us may already be familiar with the principle of cause and effect. Why? Because it's one of these seven hermetic principles. Basically, this principle states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There really is no such thing as chance and or luck. In other words, everything happens for a reason. So, why do I bring this up? I just wanna let you know that if you want to be healthy, you have to create it. You have to cause it. So as I'm going through these health benefits, not only am I going to give you the effect, but I'm also going to give you the cause. That's right, guys. So the first cause is that strawberries are rich in antioxidants. Now, if you've been following Coach D, you already know what antioxidants are. But for those of us who don't, well, antioxidants are chemicals that primarily come from plants that do a really good job at deactivating free radicals. Now, some of us may be wondering which antioxidants are found in strawberries. Well, here we go. Some of these are a little difficult to pronounce, so I'll do my best. So the first one is, <laughs> and it's a hard one right off the top. <laughs> okay, here we go. Pilar gonidin, all right? <clears throat> Pilar gonidin is the first one. Elagic acid, elagitanins, prosci... <clears throat> I'm sorry, procyandinins, okay? Uteolin, gallic acid, flavanols, polyphenols, tannins, quercetin, beta carotene, and ascorbic acid. Wow, that's a lot of antioxidants. Next up. Strawberries protect against cancer. Now, which phytonutrients help <clears throat> do that? Well, anthocyanin antioxidants. Next up, strawberries defend against heart disease. That's a good thing. So the cause would be antioxidants and fiber. The next effect is that strawberries protect our skin from damage, which is a great thing. So say thank you to vitamin A and vitamin C. Now let's talk about more health benefits. Next up, strawberries benefit brain health and prevent neurodegenerative diseases. Now, which phytonutrients do that? Well, flavonoids and anthocyanidins, okay? Next up, strawberries are high in fiber and aids in detoxification. Now, which phytonutrients are responsible for that? Well, you have vitamin A, vitamin C, soluble and insoluble fiber. Also, strawberries ensure proper nervous system and brain health. Well, we can thank manganese for that. 
And lastly, strawberries support a healthy pregnancy. And I guess we can thank good old folic or folic acid for that. So there we have it, guys. Lots and lots of health benefits from strawberries. All right. Now it's time to talk about food. Guys, I want to I want to introduce you to our go-to website for everything vegan. So say hello to ForksOverKnives.com. By the way, there is a movie entitled Forks Over Knives, and I highly recommend you watch it. Now, as usual, I went to the website, did just a little bit of research, and found two amazing vegan strawberry recipes that I want to share with you right now. The first one is Strawberry Pistachio Salad. Take a look at the picture. Looks amazing. The second recipe is Strawberry Cupcakes. Take a look at that picture. Looks delicious, yes. Now, if you are inclined to make and taste either one of these recipes, all you have to do is click on the description box. I'm providing you with a direct link to each recipe. That's right, guys. Now, here's the great thing is that the website gives you lots and lots of information, such as cooking time, instructions, and of course, an ingredient list. So do me a favor, make it taste it come back to the video and share your thoughts so there we have it guys two amazing strawberry recipes from forksoverknives.com all right 23 percent nation i hear you a lot of you say coach d thanks for the fun facts coach d thanks for the not so fun facts and i really like those vegan recipes but what i really want to know is when should i eat more strawberries well if that's your question then the simple answer is nature day what nature day yes nature day ladies and gentlemen nature day happens to be the first day of the 23 percent challenge now some of us may be living under a rock and that's okay and you may not know what the world the 23 percent challenge is well if that's you very quickly the 23% Challenge is a monthly seven-day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, your relationships. Oh, and by the way, it also helps to save good old planet Earth. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it is monthly and it is the first seven days, right? The first all the way through the seventh of every single month. Now, being that Nature Day is the first day of the challenge, that simply means that Nature Day is the first day of every month. So whether it's May 1st, June 1st, or July 1st, it's always Nature Day. Okay, now some of us may be intrigued. Some of us may be interested. Some of us may be inspired, <laughs> that's right, to eat more plants. Maybe you have the big four which is obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, or cancer. Or maybe you're considering transitioning to a more whole food plant-based diet. Or maybe you have some type of digestive issues, or maybe you have skin issues, or maybe you have some type of mental issue, right? Well, if that's you, then what I want to do is offer four ways to help make that transition a bit easier. Guys, I want to introduce you to a 3% vegan, a 10% vegan, a 17% vegan, and the ultimate 23% vegan. So let's go one by one. A 3% vegan is anyone, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only one day out of an entire month. Next up is a 10% vegan. This is a person, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only three days out of an entire month. Next up is a 17% vegan. This is anyone, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only five days out of an entire month. And lastly is a 23% vegan. Now, technically, that's what Coach D considers himself to be. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means for the first seven days of every single month, I only eat from the five food groups of plant foods. That's right. And they happen to be fruits, vegetables, and herbs, nuts and seeds, legumes, meaning beans and peas, and we cannot forget about 
whole grains. And the only beverage that I consume is good old water. So there we have it, guys. Not one, not two, not three, but four different ways to help you eat more plants. All right. Now, for those of us who are considering becoming a 3% vegan you know, or maybe even a 23% vegan, right? I want to offer you a little bit of help, a little bit of assistance. So here are Coach D's tips for a successful nature day. Number one, go visit your local grocery store. Now, when you get to the grocery store, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to two places. Number one is a produce section. Number two is a freezer aisle. Why the produce section? Well, because that's where all of your uh, fresh plant foods are located. Number two, why the frozen aisle? Well, that's where all of your frozen plant foods are located. Now, some of us may be wondering, is there really a difference between fresh versus frozen plant foods? Well, honestly, there's not that much of a difference. As a matter of fact, the nutrient content is pretty much the same. Second tip, go visit your local farmer's market. Now, this is especially helpful for those of us who must purchase organic plant foods. Thirdly, go to the prepared dishes section of your local grocery store. So, after you're finished with the produce section and the freezer aisle, walk on over to the prepared dishes section. Talk to the person behind the counter and ask them if they have any vegan, not vegetarian options. Ask for a quick sample and providing you like it, go ahead and purchase it either by the pound or maybe even two pounds if you really, really like it. Next, go visit a vegan restaurant. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to support the vegan community. Now, one of the best places to eat vegan food is vegan restaurants. Why? Well, because they hire vegan chefs who basically know not only how to cook plant foods, but they also know which plant foods to combine to give us the most nutritious, delicious dishes. And my last tip is to get a subscription to a vegan meal prep company. Now, these meal prep companies are awesome. Why? Because it's a three-step process. You order it, they deliver it, you eat it. It's just that simple. So there we have it, guys. Five tips to help make your nature day successful. All right, it's time for our question of the day. And it happens to be a fill-in-the-blank question, so here we go. Strawberries get their name from the stacks of blank that were piled around the plants to protect them from rodents and pests. Now, I believe I covered that information earlier, so if you didn't quite get it, just simply rewind the video. And if you did get it, please write your answer in the comment box below. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I definitely want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well, feel well, think well, do well, be well. This is your man, Coach D. And before I sign out, I got to ask you to please like, subscribe, and share the video, especially if you love strawberries. And don't forget to use our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. I'm signing out. Always remember to take care. God bless. And never, ever forget that Coach D loves you.